All right, say you just bought a Chinese pit bike or you're thinking about it. Let me explain a few things that you're going to want to do to your bike uh, that you're going to want to replace. Uh, some things that could break when you buy a Chinese pit bike. Um, and this is going to be kind of average for most pit bikes out there. It won't be for all of them, but it'll be for most of them if you're buying one. This right here is Patrick Stevens' uh, bike. He's a freestyle rider that we sponsor. He's a world champion for freestyle riding. And uh, his bike originally was a uh, Coolster 214. F3. When most people see it, they don't they don't realize that um, that's basically what it is. And uh, you know, it is a Chinese pit bike. It's not a Honda. It's not a Yamaha. But you know, he's been riding it for almost a year now, and uh, he really hasn't had any problems with it. And that's because we went over the bike and we replaced the things that could break, that would break, that, that, uh, anything that he would have technical problems with. That way, when he's riding it, you know, he he knows and can be secure that you know what he's riding isn't going to fail. Uh, First thing that we kind of did on his bike is we replaced the levers. The levers that typically on bikes break real easy, they fall off, they're not very reliable. We put ASV levers on them. They're going to cost about 65 bucks a piece. Uh, they're really easy to install. You know, if you have a 7 8 bar, you can pretty much put any ASV on there. Uh, they're called the shorty levers. We sell them. And uh, it's a really good upgrade to put on your bike. That way, you know, you're not breaking levers and, and they're not falling off. The next thing is we put pro taper bars on here. The bars aren't too essential, but the aluminum that the, the Chinese use, or the steel even they use sometimes, doesn't have a crossbar, or it's weak so they can bend or they can go back and forth on you, uh, just because the, the metal is real weak. Um, so we went ahead and put pro taper handle bars on here. It'll run you about $58, $65, and uh, it's a really good upgrade if you're going to be racing or you know anything other than you know putting around the backyard. Uh, the next thing we do is put 909 grips on here. The grips that come on standard Chinese pit bikes, they, they pretty much suck. They, uh, you can almost pull them right off if you're, if you're going to stop. You know, you're expecting the grip to stay, so you can actually stop when you're putting pressure on it. A lot of times, those, the grips will either rip off or they'll fall forward, and now you're indoing over the bike. Uh, so it's, it's pretty, pretty good to get some good grip glue, invest in that. It's about $4, and then you know, get you a good set of grips. You know, uh, 909, you know, we sell. Um, They've got, uh, they run about 12 bucks, so I mean, it's, it's really an inexpensive way to upgrade your, your bike, and the grips are probably the most key essential part that we've talked about so far. Uh, the next thing we do is the uh, Tornado Throttle Assembly. This right here is a Joker Throttle Assembly, we have a Killed Motorsports Throttle Assembly. You can, get a, you can get a bunch of different ones, but basically you're going to want to get an aluminum throttle assembly. The ones that typically come on pit bikes are going to be steel, uh, they break, the inside housing, um, on the actual uh, you know, where the grip sits on, that's going to be plastic. And it's, a, it's very common that the, uh, the and you can see, even coming in here, I don't know if you can, if you can see that well, but um, the throttle ca cable comes up through here and it's attached to this uh, housing right here. And that housing can be plastic. And if that is, what happens a lot of times is the throttle cable will rip through this piece right here that it's actually in. And then all of a sudden you don't have a bike that can even, even work. Um, Kind of the next thing that we're going to do on this bike is upgrade the foot pegs. The foot pegs are two brothers racing. Uh, you can get uh, that. You can get IMS pegs. Uh, you can get um, fastway pegs. You know, but the pegs that come on the Chinese pit bikes typically do stink. <coughs> uh, they're just real weak. They're real frail. They're made out of steel, and they're just they're just not strong. So if you're going to be doing any type of jumping and you don't want your, your pegs to break or bend on you or whatever, then I'd suggest getting a set of pegs. Pegs run you about 79, in between 69 and maybe 99 bucks, depending on what you get. Um, the next thing you can do is uh, definitely get a good set of graphics. The graphics that come on Chinese bikes really, really are, they just suck. They're terrible. Um, this is, these are Killer Motorsports graphics. You can get tons of different graphics. We, we do sell them and you can get them from us or basically any Honda shop, Yamaha shop, Suzuki, whatever. Um, you know, uh, another thing you want to do is check your hoses. The hoses that come on Chinese pit bikes are, they can get frail real easy. If you go out in the sun, leave them out there, they can, they can rot really, really fast. They can pop off real easy off the pet cocks or the carburetor. So what we did is we got some, uh, some new lines. We put them in there. Uh, it's typically good to put new lines on pit bikes just to, you know, go ahead and do that preemptive strike against something that could fail on you. You want to do that. The next thing you want to do um, is going to be the sprocket. You don't have to do much on the, on the sprocket. Sometimes on Chinese bikes, if it's a steel sprocket, it can break. Sometimes the aluminum's weak. And we went ahead and put a Two Brothers Racing sprocket on here. It's, it's pretty dirty and it's got a bunch of grease on it. But 
Um, it, it's, it's real bright red, so it does look good. Um, and, uh, but if you don't get a sprocket, at least what you're going to want to do is take these sprocket bolts off and you're wanna going to put uh, red Loctite on because this part of your bike right here moves so much, it vibrates so much that uh, these sprocket bolts, if it comes out, it can actually hit, it can pop out far enough where it can hit the swing arm and then just basically bust off and then you're going to have more problems than you want to deal with. So definitely put red Loctite on these bolts right here. You know, just like when you get your bike, make sure you go over all the bolts just because you know, with the bike rattling, it is a pit bike, and you know, it, it is Chinese made. You want to go over the bolts the first three times after you ride, just make sure they're all tight. Um, the next thing you want to do is get some blue Loctite or red, put them right here. These two bolts are notorious for popping out. This chain guide right here can go right through here, over here, and then it can actually bust a hole in your engine. Um, so make sure you, you, you tighten these down real, real good. Make sure you got some locker washers on there, and uh, you know, that way it won't go anywhere. Uh, the next thing is, uh, you know, tighten your spokes whenever you get a bike. I mean, it's not something you have to replace. The spokes are typically pretty good. What happens when you're riding, just from the vibration and the wobble in the wheel and just, just riding, uh, these spokes can come loose. So what you want to do is, on every bike we sell, we include a spoke wrench. Use that spoke wrench to actually make turns on here to tighten the spoke. And uh, you'll want to go every other spoke here, every third spoke, and tighten them. Go on the other side, tighten all those spokes, do the front and back. And, and you're going to want to do that for the first three rides, every single ride excuse me, you go on. And then after that, you're going to want to do it about once every two rides. It's, it's real important. If you ride motocross, you understand the importance of tightening spokes. Uh, it's, it's really crucial and vital to making sure that you know your wheels stay true. Um, next thing is get a good shock. When most, most Chinese pit bikes, when, when they get here, they don't have good shocks. And... Uh, this one does. The 204 F3 model that we sell in most of our custom bikes as well as Pitster Pro bikes or um, uh, so some better aftermarket bikes, they do have good shocks. But most Chinese pit bikes don't have good shocks. So um, it's going to be, uh, they, don't, they don't have compression on them. So whenever you're coming back up or, or basically going down on the jump, it's going to feel like a pogo stick. It doesn't have any compression, doesn't have any rebound. So you're going to want to make sure that you have a good shock. You can get some pretty decent quality shocks, whether it's Fast Ace, you can get iShock, Elka, Marzocchi, uh, any one of those will work good for you. Um, and we do sell a variety of shocks, so definitely let us know if you need anything. Next thing is forks. Um, get, get some good forks. If, if you get a typical Chinese bike, sometimes they, uh, they can break. <coughs> Not the actual fork piece, but um, the mechanicisms inside can actually break. Um, these are 35 millimeter forks, and uh, a typical problem in most Chinese pit bikes is right here, um, the little bushing in here can actually dissolve. Uh, they're, not, they're not very good quality, so if you need to get some new bushings, let us know. Um, it's not something you really have to, to do before you ride, but you know, just know that if you buy a Chinese pit bike, you probably will have to replace the bushings at some point. They're just real frail, frail bushings, and if any dirt builds up right here, then it, it can damage it when you hit a jump. So after you ride every time, you know, you go home and, and you, you know, if you have dirt built up right here, you just get some good contact cleaner, wash it off, and, and make sure this leg is cleaned up real good and, you know, put some oil on it. That way, um, you know, if it's looped up, and, and you know, you can re reduce the risk of, you know, say you take your bike out again, you can reduce the risk of that bushing breaking or becoming more frail and then oil leaking out, and then you have to you know, go take it to a suspension guy to rebuild the forks and put more oil in and put new bushings. Um, so just save yourself the trouble and just make sure these are cleaned up every time after you go ride. Um, make sure uh, the brakes that typically come on pit bikes are actually pretty decent. I'm kind of surprised. Um, all you got to do is just, uh, you know, make sure they're bled right, you know, put new oil in them maybe once every, you know, probably about four months. Just go through your whole bike, do, do your tune up and, and do that. Um, the other thing that, that you really want to do to your bike is uh, when you get when you get the bike the first hour you ride it, it's got braking oil in it. And that braking oil is only supposed to last about an hour. It's supposed to just cleanse and just, just you know, get everything, all the particles in there, just wash it all out. And so what you want to do is actually take that drain bolt out, drain the oil, and then put some, uh, either some castor oil, some Maxima uh, four stroke oil in it, 10W40. And, uh, you know, you're going to put 0.8 milliliters in there. And uh, you know, just put new oil in it after the first time, first about the first hour after you ride. Um, uh, just put that in, and then you know, probably change the oil about every about every three, three.
three rides or so, you know, if you put in a good couple hours on, on your bike, and you know, once about every three rides change oil, just make sure it stays fresh. Um, other than that, that's really all you want to do to a Chinese pit bike. Um, now, also one more thing, the chain. The chain that comes on the pit bike really, really sucks. You're going to want to change the chain first thing, uh, first chance you get. This is an RK420 MXZ chain. You're going to want to put one of these or maybe a DID chain on your bike. Uh, what happens is a lot of times, you know, you just got so much torque on these little bikes that that chain can snap. And it comes up here, bust this case right here, can bust a, a stator assembly that you have, as well as possibly knock a hole in your engine. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's probably the weakest link on a pit bike, and I'm surprised I even missed it uh, telling it on camera at this point. But uh, definitely change your chain. Uh, uh, say you have a 204F3, it's a 103 link, so if you, uh, <coughs> which is the biggest, biggest link chain you can get. So if you go buy one, at least get a 104 link. That'll cover most pit bikes, and um, you know, make sure you change that. Other than that, that's, that's pretty much everything you would need to do to, to make, make your bike uh, track ready, um, you know, make it to the point where you wouldn't have any maintenance issues really on it. You know, just stay on the bike. It'll last you a long time, and you just got to make sure you, 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 you know, handle it with white gloves. That way uh, you can minimize anything that could go wrong on it. So uh, have fun on your pit bike.